What's up, YouTube? This is Red Zone 101. As always, God bless and peace. Hey, guys, wanted to do a video on um, something that I've been thinking about for some time now. With all these new gun laws that are coming up, basically to try to curb gun violence, and I get that, but at the same time, they're really affecting law abiding citizens like me because criminals don't follow the laws that are. So they're not going to follow any new laws. Anyway, wanted to talk about what if things got so bad here, meaning like, what if you legally could not own a firearm? Most people, when you think about self-defense, you think about using a firearm. What if in America, this is America, land of the free, home of the brave, and you know we love our firearms. What if, and we love the Second Amendment, what if you legally could not own a firearm? What would you do to defend you? What would you do, what would you use to defend yourself? Well, I want to show you a couple of my choices, okay? Now, granted, my first choice is always going to be a firearm when it comes to self-defense. Um, right here, I've got my Stoger STR9S9. It's got a 20-round mag. I've got my um, Caltech Sub-2000 here. Uh, I got two 30-round mags for it. So, for home defense, that's more than enough, in my opinion, especially if you're talking about a deadly encounter okay but what if you could not own a firearm okay I want to show you some of my choices that I would probably choose if I couldn't own a firearm something that I could use for self-defense meaning someone's trying to do a home invasion and I need to protect myself or my family now I've always talked about air guns for self-defense could they be um, effectively used for self-defense and I seriously believe with good shot placement and good preparation and getting an air gun that's got a good track record for reliability that yes they could be now this is one of my choices here this is a Dan West a Humorex um, Dan Wesson model 715 it's an exact replica of a 357 Magnum and the weight is almost exactly the same and it functions almost exactly like the real thing it even has these cartridges that you put your pellets in now this is a pellet gun okay now is this going to have the same firepower or knockdown or uh, power that a firearm would have no it's not going to have that but one thing about self-defense that a lot of people forget self-defense is as much mental as it is physical if somebody's coming into your home got to clear the uh, cylinder the <laughs> cylinder gap and you point this at them it looks like a real firearm now granted it's not going to have like i said the effectiveness as a firearm but just the intimidation factor could be enough to make somebody back off of you turn around and run in the other direction okay now that said, if you had to use it, a couple of shots, if I was going to use this, I would be shooting either the chest or above the chest, meaning I'm going for the face because I want to make this as effective as possible. Now, granted, is it going to terminate the uh, attacker? Probably not. But six shots of this to the face at self-defense distances, we're talking anywhere from let's say uh, 10 to 15 to, to 20 feet, definitely might give you an opportunity, if not to have the person to run away, but maybe to get away yourself. Because pain is a motivator. Six shots of this to the face, trust me, the person is gonna bleed, okay? And it's gonna hurt. So let's take a couple of shots with it, okay? I'm gonna stand right here. I'm about, 20 feet away from my target. If you emptied six shots of that into someone's face, that might give you just enough, just enough, let's say, opportunity to, be, uh, to run and get away, to get to safety. And the bottom line in a self-defense encounter is to survive the encounter. You're, you're not always going to put the person down, but your main goal is to survive the encounter. If you can run, I'm gonna be honest, run. 
if you can get away, get away. But if you're cornered, if you're in your home and you're defending you, your family, you do what you have to do, okay? So six shots of this to the face would definitely be a deterrent. Well, let me show you something that I like even better. I like this because of the realism. Now, if I was going to use an air gun for self-defense, CO2 powered, all of these are CO2 powered, I'd probably go with the Crossman DPMS SBR. This right here is uh, CO2 powered. There's two, two uh, CO2s that go like in the mag here. It holds about 20 to 25 rounds. But what's nice about this particular one, now granted, if you saw somebody pointing this, let's adjust the stock, you would think that is a real, um, a real AR. Flip up the sights. You would think it's a real AR. But if the person kept coming, you can go anywhere from single shot to full auto. This is a full auto BB gun. 20 rounds of BBs, 1.77, coming at you. And you're aiming, like I said, you want to be the most effective as possible. This is me. Not going to tell you what to do. But I'm aiming for the face. Got my red dot here. Let's say that somebody is trying to... Uh, break in I hear him kicking in the window or breaking in the window I hear him kicking in the door let's take a couple of shots with this we're gonna do we're gonna do three shots single okay well single shots okay and then I'm gonna go to full on well, let's do three shots we're gonna aim at the uh, kitty litter there I got them filled with water here we go see if I got my red dot on one Two, three. Switching to full off. Now that's 20 to 25 rounds of BBs coming at you. Now, I don't care how tough you are or how tough you think you are. You get 20 rounds or 25 rounds of BBs coming at you at about 400 feet per second and you're aiming for the face. I don't know anyone that's going to have too much fight left in them or want to continue to proceed on the path that they were to proceed on the path that they were on to try to hurt you. I couldn't see that. I know if I had 25 BBs coming at me, I don't know if they're hitting my cheek, my nose, my eyes, what have you, but I'm bleeding. My face is bleeding. I'm not going to want to continue to fight. And I tell you this, everyone talks about that 300 and some pound meth head that's not going to feel pain or whatever. I've lived in the hood for almost 55 years. I've yet to encounter a 355 pound meth head that's not going to feel pain. Okay? As I said, pain is a motivator. Could this be used for self-defense? I don't know. You tell me. I know I could get the job done with it. Wouldn't be my first choice. But again, if I wasn't able to own a firearm, I could make this work. Now let's say you want something that's a little smaller. <laughs> this right here was a project of mine. It's a Crossman Bushmaster MPW. Now this is an SBR, but I bought it on eBay and it was almost brand new, but the back stock was broke. So what I did, I took the back stock off I put on a little uh, a buffer here, and I made it um, a pistol caliber. Well, I made it like a pistol, like an A, like an A, an AR pistol. So what we're going to do, we're going to take a couple of shots with this. Let's see how this works. Works the same way that my other one did. The, okay, the other Crossman. Well, let's see. Now, last time I tried this, I forgot to set the red dot. And as I see the red dot. I forgot to charge it, I apologize. So we're gonna wing this. So I'm gonna take three shots. Cock it first. There we go. Did I do that? And I'm getting this on camera. What's up YouTube? I found out what was wrong. 
I was about to say I'm having problems with my Crossman MPW. I was trying to shoot it, it wouldn't shoot. And this why, and this is why you always have to make sure that your firearms, that you're doing what you're supposed to do and eliminate the, the user. Bottom line is, I didn't have the darn thing loaded, okay? And I'm trying to figure out why it won't shoot. Let's try this again, okay? So we're gonna take a couple of shots. Okay, safety's on, safety's working. Now, there we go. Try this again, full auto. Okay, that would definitely deter a would-be attacker. Now, yes, I did have a couple of issues with it. Like I said, this wouldn't be my first choice. Um, an air gun wouldn't be my first choice, but then again, you use what you have at the time. Now, let's go with something with a little more power. Okay, this right here is my Hansen. Uh, I think it's E. This is a brake barrel pellet gun. It's shooting a 22 caliber pellet at over, at over, uh, I think it's a thousand feet like per second. So, we're just going to take a shot with this right here. Now, this right here has a lot more power. This has more power than any of the other air guns that I've uh, shown you. So, we're going to just take a quick shot with this just to show you. And I'm not going to shoot the, uh, the containers because they're like they're already punctured. But just to show you how hard this hits, okay? I'll shoot this, this uh, silhouette that's in the back. Did you hear that? It's rocking the target. We're going to try that one more time. I want you to see this. Now granted, this is sing single shot, okay? I get that. But at the same time, if this is all that you had, Someone's breaking in, breaking into your house. I'm aiming for the head, okay? Because I'm not trying to play nice. You're trying to break into my house to hurt me or my family. I'm gonna place the shots where they're gonna be the most effective, where they're gonna do the most damage. Now we're gonna look at the silhouette that's out there. I'm a little bit over 20 feet away from it, but I want you to see how this rocks the target. That is hitting with a lot of power, a lot of authority. This actually could be lethal. If you shot them in the neck, the head. I've even heard of people that were shot with air guns and they got shot in the chest and the air gun actually hit the heart. So yes, would this be my first choice? No, but we're talking about I couldn't own a firearm. I need something. I could make this work. Now, let me show you a couple of things that were actually designed for less lethal self-defense options. Now, you know this is one of my favorite with that I carry. This is my Berna HD launcher. It has a uh, five round mag. And this thing has a uh, .68 caliber projectile. You can shoot either um, these nylon here or else there's these chemical rounds here. These are like getting hit with, uh, with, uh, with pepper gas, okay, with pepper powder. It's like getting hit with a, um, what's that called? Uh, <laughs> with a pepper sprayer, okay? You get what I'm saying. So we're gonna take a couple of shots like with this, but this is one of my favorite, okay? Because I can carry this. This is, I can carry this on uh, my person. Got a holster for it. And uh, for less lethal options, this is great. But if I couldn't have a firearm, I would definitely have something like this here. You want to take a couple of shots at the target with it? Now I got five rounds. Again, I'm gonna place those rounds where they're gonna do, where they're gonna do like the most damage. Let's aim at the uh, curtain. Here's it. Let's see here. Now, as you can see, that was doing a lot of damage, okay? Now, I gotta remember, take it off safety, otherwise it's not going to work. But you can see what it's doing to those curtains. Now, granted, that's only plastic, but imagine that being with someone's face. 
that's going to definitely cause a lot of damage. It's going to be effective if you use good shock plates. Now let me show you a couple of options that have a little more power here. This is my Umarex. I think it's a T4E HDR. Again, this is in six, uh, .68 uh, caliber. Now this one has a lot more oomph. I actually had, I bought this online. It's been modified. It doesn't just have, let's say, 8 or 15 or 16 joules. This has 30 joules. This has some serious power. The downsize to this, now granted, you've only got five shots. But the downsize is because it's using so much CO2 or CO2 powered that you're only going to get about the five shots. You might get a second mag. The mags are easy to replace. You open that up there, and there it is there. You got your, your round. Put it back in, and you're good to go. Now, to make this work, some people don't like it because what you have to do, you puncture the CO2 here. You have to hit it. What's up YouTube? Red Zone 101 again. Again, you have to make sure that you're not, you, you gotta make sure that you're putting the CO2 in right. Um, I couldn't puncture the CO2 because this right here punctures the CO2. The CO2 has to be facing this way with the puncture in. I had it facing the other way. I'm trying to do with too many things at once, I guess. Let's try this again. I wanna show you just how much power this has. Again, you're only going to get five shots, but when you're talking about with 30 joules, you get hit one or twice with this, once or twice. Trust me, you're not going to want a third or second, a third, fourth, or whatever shot. Well, let's take a couple of shots with it. We're going to aim, aim at the, uh, the crates again. There we go. And again, it is very loud. Now, some of those rounds actually almost went right through here. You can see they're puncturing here. If you look at the other side, there's still water. They're almost going completely through. You do not want to get hit with this. Granted, yes, you've only got five shots. But if you place those five shots, whether it's center mass, whether it's a leg, whether it's, and Lord forbid, the face, above like the neck, trust me, the person is going down. The person is not going to want to continue to fight. So this is actually, if you have the CO2 in right, I'm just going to be real, it's a great option for self-defense. Now, let me show you one of the easiest things to use for self-defense. Let's make sure that the CO2 actually is in the right way because this functions a lot like for this here this right here is another Umarex product this is the t4e hds and this is basically a double barrel shotgun now see i do have it in the right way you want to have this end facing towards the bottom and then you screw it in feeling like a no vice here i should have had that in the right way to begin with like on the other one give it a whack it pierces CO2, and what I didn't show you like on the other one, this red indicator will come up showing you that it's, well, it's ready to fire. I love this one out of all, out of, all of my, not my less lethal options. This is one of my favorites. I love the look of it. I've always wanted a double barrel shorty. This is sweet. Now, it opens up. You press this here, and you put your rounds in. Now, all of these less lethals here, that I have take 0.68 caliber rounds which is really good because at least this way I can use the ammo for all of my uh, less lethal so let's take a couple of shots with this now this is for up close and personal now you have a selector switch here instead of opening up the barrel like on a traditional shotgun you press your selector switch that's going to shoot the left barrel push it to the right it'll shoot the right barrel push it in the middle you get both barrels at one time well let's take a couple of shots with it okay i love this one <laughs> okay 
Now this one here has an upgrade kit in it too, like my other um, uh, T4E, the revolver. This one here is shooting at about 20 joules, which is, that's some pretty good power because the, um, what is it, the, uh, trying to get, get it together, my uh, burner the uh, HD is shooting at probably around 12 joules or something like that. So it's got a nice little jump. But again, this one has no sights, it's for up close and personal. Let's see if I can hit something with it. Okay, here we go. That's, that's the right barrel. That hits really hard. And let's try it one more time. Let's do both barrels. Now this one here, you're going to get more shots than you would like with the revolver because it's using less uh, with CO2. But the great thing about this, both of these, you you can use any 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 of these rounds here. Okay, you got your uh, pepper rounds here. You got your uh, your nylon rounds. I'm not sure like which ones where these are, but just about any any .68 caliber round is going to work in this uh, like revolver. And also. You've got these aluminum rounds. Now these aluminum rounds, these really hit hard, okay? This here could definitely, well, let's put it like this. They hit really, really hard. Um, you could really do a lot of damage like with these. So here, we're gonna shoot, we're gonna just shoot both barrels this time. Aiming at the center target. You can see it rocks that target. And again, that's shooting both rounds. Okay. And with this here, with the modification kit I got in it, I'm probably getting about, I'd say, I'd say about eight shots with it, which is nice. But again, it's one of the simplest ones to use. Pop it open here, put your rounds in there, hit your selector switch, or just leave it on both, both barrels, and boom, you're ready to go. Really, really nice, okay? So this would be another good bedside shot. And now, let's talk about, out of all these, what would be my, my number one choice? If I couldn't own a firearm, and I had to have something for self-defense, this would be it right here. This is the Berna Mission 4, okay? Now this right here takes a 90 gram, well, an 88 gram CO2, but I can also use 90 gram CO2s that are made for guns that you, air guns that use the 88 grams, uh, uh, like uh, of the CO2s. Now this has two 20 round mags, okay? This right here would be my first choice, all right? Works just like an AR. Should be, I think I've got the gas off now. It's been a minute since I've used it. Let me do a test shot. Turn on my red dot. Yep, it's working. Okay, now this here can shoot a single shot or else, meaning like one shot like at a time, or else you can, I think it's got a, no, it doesn't have a full auto, okay? But you can get rounds off really quick with this. We're going to take a couple of shots to show you. I want to show you why this is my first choice. Okay, let's say we're rocking uh, multiple targets, people trying to break in. They're normally coming through one entrance, let's say the door or the window. Okay, let's take some shots with this. Now I put a, uh, I made a little pad here. Um, there is a, actually a stock that goes on the back of the CO2, but I didn't like that. Uh, I like the pad better, it feels better. This feels better for me. Okay, let's take some shots with it. Turn up that red dot a little bit. There we go. Okay, here we go. That is why this would be my first choice. Can you imagine, and these, this is hitting really hard. I mean, this is hitting really hard. If somebody's breaking in, like I said, I can use anywhere 
Now, I'm not going to tell you to do this. I can use the nylon rounds. I can use the aluminum rounds in this. I found out they function in it. I can actually use the, um, uh, uh, what are the, uh, the pepper rounds, which I wouldn't advise like in the house, but if you had to use them, realize you're probably going to get some of that residue back at you, but, but the attacker is going to get the worst of it. Because not only are they going to get the effects of the uh, pepper rounds, but they're also going to get that hard impact that's going to hit them, okay? And you shooting 20 rounds of this at somebody, and .68 caliber may not sound big, those are some big rounds. They're hitting really hard. You know what? Let's take a shot with some of the steel rounds. Just a, a steel round and a pepper round. Just, just to see how they work, okay? And guys, I thank you for hanging in there with me. I know this has been a long video. I want to thank my cameraman, Mr. Washington. Appreciate your help here. I'm only going to put two of the pepper rounds in. Because as you know, these pepper rounds are not cheap. Okay. And I'm going to put two of the aluminum rounds in the other round. Let's go with the pepper rounds first. All right. Now somebody was asking a question. If somebody had on thick clothing with the pepper rounds first. Yeah, it kind of depends. Now if you're hitting a soft surface, it may not be it may not be hard enough to break the rounds okay but then again they might first uh, I've never had to actually try that and I'm not ta taking a round okay <laughs> but again if you hit somebody in the head with it that's gonna be hard enough for the round to burst okay it's gonna hurt like hell if you hit them in the chest depending on how many layers of clothing on it may not burst it may it, it may or may not burst that's why I advise going for legs it's the person has a lot of clothing on whatever go for legs go for arms well go for legs and I would go for above the head okay if you shoot the person like in the legs that's gonna be a lot of pain you can't walk right if you're in pain okay I mean if your legs are on fire if your legs if you take out the legs you know the person's not going to be able to fight as effectively and they're probably not going to want to continue to fight okay shoot them in the face and I'm not telling you to do this, but I. But again, in self-defense, you do what you have to do to protect your family. When I go for the face, I'm going to put the shots where they're going to be the most effective. That's what I'm going to tell you. Okay, let's try the pepper round. Here we go. This thing is really accurate. Okay, let's switch up now. Let's try the steel round. Okay, let's aim it. Okay, I'm, I'm only using two, so we're going to aim, aim at the uh, silhouette, and I'm going to put one in the target there. So yes, they hit hard. They're moving a little slower than the, um, the nylon rounds because they're heavier, but then again, they're going to have more impact. Okay, you're talking about steel versus plastic or nylon. So this would be my first choice. Now, I just want to have... if you. If you stuck with me for this long, let's go with an honorable mention, okay? Now, I love archery, okay? I love air guns. This right here gives me the best of both worlds. <laughs> this is my Humorex Javelin. Javelin, CO2 powered um, boat launcher, basically it is. Now, the 90 gram, CO2, it goes in the front here. Now you only get one shot at a time with this. So why would I even consider this as a self-defense weapon? Well, put the boat on here. Let me tell you why. Because, make sure it clicks in. You could put any kind of hitch you want on here. Now granted, I've just got some field tips, I guess you could call them. But you could put a hunting tip on it. That's razor sharp. Now, this thing is hitting so hard that I had to reinforce my archery target. Okay, it's hitting about as hard as a, um, as a crossbow. And anyone knows a crossbow, you hit with that, you know, you hunt with a crossbow. People hunt bear with crossbows, okay? So one shot with this is definitely gonna either put someone down, hit them in the right place, or else they're gonna be limping out trying to find help. Let's take a couple of shots with this. Now, 
Normally I would have a red dot on here, but because I might want to reach out and touch someone, I've got me a scope on it. So we're going to take a couple of shots with this. Now for every shot you have to copy it. Let's make sure the safety's working. Safety's working. Now I will say this. This is very loud. Okay? If nothing else, if you shoot them and miss, it's going to sound like a gun will go going off. And I don't know about you, but most people when they hear gunshots, they take off running. So, here we go. Very loud. We're going to take a couple more shots. Let's see how fast I can, uh, load, can load this and shoot it. I'm getting it on first. <laughs> okay. Pop it back every time. Put another one on. Get in there. Not the fastest, but still. Once you get it in there. And one thing I wouldn't advise is cocking it before you put the, the, um, the boat on. This thing is very accurate. more. As you can tell, I like this one. <laughs> I like them all, but this here. And just a few more to go. And last but not least, that target okay now I didn't buy this one for self-defense I bought this one just because I love archery and as I said I love air guns so combining the two just seemed just seemed really really natural you know but those are sinking into that target pretty daggone good I mean you can take take a look at that and that's reinforced okay so uh, now, yeah, shooting a little bit to the right, so I'm going to have to adjust my scope, but still, if you're aiming for center mass, you don't even have to get a headshot with that. A center mass shot with that is definitely going to send someone to the emergency room. And I'm just using field tips. So imagine if you're using something like a hunting tip. Um, I don't know about you, but... I wouldn't want to get hit with that. This thing is shooting with some serious authority. I mean, it is really kicking them out. Now, is it the fastest to load and shoot? No. But if someone is breaking into your house, you've already got it set up. Let's say you got your CO2 screwed in, you got your, your boat that's already in there. One shot. Hit somebody once with that. Whether it's the leg, whether it's the chest, Lord forbid, above the, above the neck. That's it, okay? At least in my opinion, okay? But anyway, guys, I'm going to conclude this video. I just wanted to show some different options for self-defense that if you weren't able to own a firearm, that you're still, that there are still some good options out there so that you can protect yourself and also your family. Now, would this be my first choice? No. Although these here, when we talk about the Umarex uh, Mission 4, definitely would be my first choice for less lethal self-defense. I love the, um, uh, like the amount of ammo that I can uh, have with it. Uh, I love the firepower, the accuracy. I love the versatility of uh, like the rounds here. Uh, then again, the Umarex Air Javelin. One shot of that, trust me, you're not going to need another shot. Um, the rest of these, like I said, my Berna HD, I love the Kiri. These two, I had a little bit of an issue with the, uh, uh, like the revolver here, but that was on me. Um, uh, but other than that, and the same thing with the, uh, the MPV, uh, the MPW. But again, these are air guns. They're not perfect. 
Now, the most reliable would be my SBR. That's what I would grab if I didn't have anything to use for self-defense and I just had that. I'd feel more than comfortable being able to use that. But again, my first choice for self-defense, a home invasion is always going to be a firearm. But that said, if I couldn't own a firearm, I could make these work here. So, anyway, people, I want to thank you for watching. I'm hoping that this was uh, um, helpful. Well, as you see, I'm not perfect. Um, I can make mistakes. It happens. Um, but that said, you know, I try to, like, that's why I practice, okay? And I try to make sure that I'm as effective as possible, okay? And, like I said, when nobody's perfect, these aren't perfect. Firearms are not perfect. But you practice, you make sure that whatever, whatever it is you're going to use for self-defense is for the most part reliable, it's in good shape, it's in working, over, working order, good working order, and that you try to eliminate the user error, okay? Anyway, guys, I want to well, thank you for watching. This is Red Zone 101. You guys be safe out there. As always, watch your six. God bless and peace.